In this video, we're going to continue our Gutenberg plugin spotlight series with the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg plugin. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are, we're in the uh, WordPress repository. We're looking at the Gutenberg blocks, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, and we're going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly of this plugin. So let's first start with the good. And as we scroll through here, you can see a lot of things to see right with this plugin. 21 five-star reviews out of 21 ratings um, is by Brainstorm Force, and that is the team behind the Astra theme. They've also co-developed the Cartflow plugins, and it's been updated a week ago. So these are all checking all the boxes of a good quality plugin. Um, you know, if you were to download this, you can be pretty assured that this plugin will be here in six months, in a year, and two years later, because this team supports their products. As you scroll through here, you can see what we're going to get ourselves into sections, multi buttons, a lot of different things. We'll take a quick look at in this video. So you're getting a Swiss army knife of different blocks and you can see here it's optimized for performance and speed and many more blocks coming soon. Now, before we go into the actual blocks themselves, I want to tell you about a quick thing that you need to know. So I'm launching my first Gutenberg course. It's called Gutenberg Hero, and the entire goal of it is to show you how powerful Gutenberg can be, almost as powerful as any of the page builders that are out there, but it can be done for 100% free, and it can be done with all uh, plugins and extendability and amazing things that are still to come in the WordPress community. If you want to learn more, there's a link in the description below, or you can just go to my homepage, incomesh.com, and click on the button that talks about the course. All right, let's get into the individual plugins within this Ultimate Add-ons set. All right, so we've got a page here. Uh, I'm just going to call it the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. And I wanted to highlight some of the uh, really notable components within the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg plugin. So we have here the call to action button. We'll just show you me creating that button one more time here. We'll use our keyboard shortcut here and do call to action. And this will bring us the ultimate add-ons call to action. And what's nice about this is if you just want a very simple uh, call to action that you can put on maybe half the column, half the screen width, you can do that here. You've got a few options here about changing how the header looks, and it is inheriting my themes setting. So this is my themes H1, et cetera, et cetera. You can also customize the font size if you choose to. The only challenge with this is that I do not see a way to make this mobile responsive, meaning if you set this to 58, let me just show you here. Um, we're kind of bouncing between the good and the bad and the ugly here. So if I set the font size to 60, you would assume you'd want it to get smaller if it's on a smaller screen. But as we view this page, all right, this is definitely a font size 60. And let's see what happens if I collapse the screen down to a mobile size. So as you can see, I'm going to use an um, icon here. Let me get my what font. Let me get my what font on. So here, if we look at this, this is a size 60 font. Now if I collapse this down, and I look at it again, you can still see a size 60. I would expect the ability to adjust the font size based on the screen size that I'm viewing it from. That is, uh, whether it's a bad or an ugly, I'll let you guys be the choice, but that's something I'm not a big fan of here, is I would rather it not even give me the option to adjust the font size if it's only going to allow it across the board. So I'm gonna reset this. Now, let me just show you here. If I reset this, this should be at my uh, font. Let's just move it to an H2 to be clear. All right, so in here, I have it on my H2. And let's take a look at this page now. Okay, so I'll do the exact same test here. We'll look at this. This is currently a size 30. That is the H2 of this font. But now, of this theme, if I collapse the screen window down, you can see it's moved down to 25. Not a huge change, mind you, um, but it is responsive based on the theme, which is funny because I'm actually running the Astra theme developed by the same com uh, area. So you would expect, maybe over time, I'm sure this feature will come in there, uh, but other um, other block uh, repositories like Cadence Blocks gives you the ability to customize font sizes at specific screen resolution. So that that is a benefit there. Uh, but still, for quick and easy calls to actions, this is a pretty useful uh, tool here, the ultimate add-ons. And let me just show you while we're here, back on the, the page we're building with, if I go into my drawer, which I do so infrequently at this point because I'm just so used to the keyboard shortcuts, but if I go in here, you'll see UAGB, that's ultimate add-ons for Guten. Berg. <laughs> I guess it is. Gutenberg blocks, maybe. Um, so here you can see all the 
different items you get with it, which is really cool. Some of the things that are unique I haven't seen in any other plugin is this restaurant menu, which you would think like, okay, that's super niche, but it's really useful. Like you can put your stuff in there, you can organize it nicely, and you can see when you go from you know left align to center align, it does more than simply align the text. It actually rearranges everything. So now the the dollar signs and, and the cost is there. If you do on the right-hand side, you can see it actually changes everything around here. So it's pretty cool. I really appreciate that. That's nice. If we look at the menu items here, you can see go three, two menu items. If I go to five, six menu items with three columns, you can see some of the adjustments that are being made here very easily. Um, you know, if I look at something like a Thrive Architect, you can certainly do this, but the agility by which you can change things around from two columns to three columns, that would take so many button clicks and so many little adjustments. And here you just got a couple little sliders and it, it does the deal. Um, so I'm really, really impressed with uh, how all that works. You can see adjusting different portions of the content, the color, and so very nice. I, I like this. This is a unique one I haven't seen anywhere else. Very good job. Okay, uh, to balance it out, let's talk about something that just irks me about this set of blocks. So let's look at the way they handle the settings over here on the right hand side of the screen for different types of buttons. So here we have the call to action block again. And if we look over here to the button settings, you would expect to see the ability to adjust the color of the button. And you do see some colors, but it's actually the but the button border, only the button border. And then you're off of the settings here. So you're like, what, what's going on here? You can only adjust the border here. You actually need to go into the color settings and then you find the header again, then the description. Then down here, you find the button actual color. So you can adjust the font and the background and adjust it from normal to hover. So and let's just do this and maybe this. So now I've adjusted my uh, hover actions. But again, if I wanna now make my border match that purple that I have instead of the green, I need to go all the way up here again and find the border color. And now I can adjust this to the purple and that to the green. So you just, that's a little bit weird. The, they're, they're separate and why have the border color in a separate spot? I guess because the border width is there and this is color. So they have to make a choice how they did this. But what they could have done is stayed consistent. So if we go down to the next uh, section here, which is the multi buttons, um, which is really helpful, first of all, I love having multi buttons coming from other page builders where it's hard, you know, hard as you know what, to get buttons just to look nice and be like three buttons across. That's, that's a hard thing to do for, for some reason for some page builders. Um, but if you go into the button one settings, now you've got this entirely different interface which is no better uh, than the previous one. So now you've actually, instead of being able to click to hover between normal and hover options, you just have this long string of options. So you've got color, and this color is actually, what, what color is this? This is the font color for button one. Only So already, like you'd expect like text color or typography color, not just color. Then you've got background color, so we can make that there, but that's only the hover. Then you got the border color, so let's make that a little bit darker. Okay, looking good so far. But now hover color. Okay, so now we're, we're kind of essentially repeating the same thing every different palette for hover options now. Whew. Okay, so now let's say we want this to turn white on hover. Okay, good. Background hover. All right, getting better. And then border hover color. Let's make a light gray. So just to me, that's a little irksome that you've got different an entirely different experience for editing the options here for the button you know hover this is obviously this is very logical i like that but then you go here and then you've got to kind of just scroll through the long sea of colors to figure out what your different settings are um, you know I'm, I'm picking little things here and there but i want you guys to be aware of both the good and the bad because ultimately this is a great plugin this is a fantastic plugin because it gives you things like this info box which is this one-stop shop so let me show you i'll put info box in and this one thing is so so flexible so within this one plugin you can adjust the icon that is shown here so we can say all right we either want an icon or an image so you can instead of the icon you could select an image let's say we want to put this guy's face as the beginning of our info box so very easily put that there or you can switch over to icon and you can search for icons let's say we want to search for a box you've got boxes or let's say we just want to go through and just search through the 70 different pages of <laughs> icons we have here. Pretty wild how many options we have. So there we go. You can also adjust the size of the icon very easily. 
adjust the color of the icon. And you see, they're doing the same thing with the uh, hover and color being separate items, not really with a toggle switch. Typography settings, you can enable or disable the preview. You've got so many different options. We won't go through all of these because it takes us all day just for this one widget alone. Um, but I kind of just flip through them so you can see the thickness of the, the separator. You can also add in calls to action. So we can add a button below here and even add an icon to the button and include, you know, obviously the button color and things of that nature. So a ton of useful features of this uh, all in of itself. And that's just one of the like dozens that you get with the Ultimate Add-ons plugin. So this one I'm a huge fan of. I use this one quite frequently. Uh, as we scroll down here, you can see we have the advanced header, which is, you know, kind of nice. It's a little time saver. You've got the, a header, a little separator, and a subtext here. So that's nice to be able to include that all in one. And down here, let me, let's just start this one from scratch so I can show you kind of what's cool about this. Let's go in between these two blocks and go into our ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg and look here for the section. Now this one, when you first pull it up, you're like, what the heck is this? What's going on here? And this is uh, similar to the row layout with uh, cadence blocks. I'd say it's kind of like a light version of it because it has the same properties of you can create the section and then within the section, you can add uh, additional content, additional blocks. So the first thing we might want to do within here is let's say we want to make this a three column layout. So we can go to columns and this is the default columns um, option here. So there's very limited in how many columns you can actually add. But let's say in this first column, we want to take this info box, just drag it up and move this guy in here. And then we can even duplicate this and drag this guy over here. And I believe if we wanted to, we could also Duplicate it again. Can you drag it to the side? You can't drag it to the side. This is kind of the limits of uh, the the built-in columns feature. Let's go. Let's go look at our options here with columns. And here you go, from two columns to three columns. And then we can take this info box here. So very quickly, you've added in a nice little call to action area. But this blue is it's kind of smart how they do it. It, it it took me a little while to understand the beauty of it but when i'm using cadence blocks for example uh and i'm using the the row feature i don't exactly know where the row is and where the different uh sections within sections are this makes it very clear so um this won't show up if i update the page and i view the page you'll see here we've got our menu items our h1s our calls to actions our multi buttons that we've kind of played around with ad nauseum and here we've got our three info boxes so you see there's actually nothing visible uh, about the uh, border here but if we go back into edit the page we can come back in and we can see this here where we can select this section more easily than we can in other uh, in other tools and then underneath here we can go through to the border yeah let's make sure we're selecting the section we've got the section content width you can say full width or boxed and we can also set the width for all the content within the section itself. You can even change it from a section to a div, which is pretty interesting that you can do that. Now, um, so this border here, this doesn't, this isn't going to show up on its own, but we can give it its own border. So we've given it a solid border. Let's just give it some more width here so you can see it easily. And we can also change the border radius. So you can see here we're making a, just a slightly rounded box. That's way too wide though. So let's make this like a three pixel box. And we can even change it from solid to, let's say double. So we've got two little lines, do inset. Let's see what inset looks like. This is the challenge with Gutenberg though, is that you, you can't exactly see what it's going to look like. So you do have to bounce a little bit back and forth to the real page. But okay, so this is kind of nice. Kind of gives you that effect of being kind of sunken into the page, which is what inset means. And here I was just playing before recording, uh, kind of showing you how this works. Okay, so that's a quick first look at the Ultimate Add-ons Gutenberg plugin by Brainstorm Force. And it is one of the many tools you can add to your toolbox to improve your skills with Gutenberg and improve the efficiency by which you can build nice looking landing pages. Now, if you want to check out my course where I build a fully functioning opt-in page, sales page, I show you dozens of plugins that can help and go into much more depth than I can do on this YouTube video here. Go ahead and head to my website and check out the link in the description below and check out the course. It's on a very, very, very limited time launch 
discount. So be sure to check that out as well. And again, if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe and the like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment and tell me what you want to know more about Gutenberg, WordPress in general, or just being awesome with digital marketing. I'd love to help you with better content in the future. I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. My goal online is to help you with the find the perfect tool for your next project, and I'll see you in the next video.